As we begin this Feast of the Holy Trinity, how appropriate it is that we begin in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost. Well, Father Francis, back once again with one of my little homespun theological reflections on this, the Feast of the Holy Trinity in Cycle C. Uh, last year I had a little bit more fun, I think, with my Bob Ross uh, homily on the Trinity. You can check that out if you would like something a little more entertaining. <laughs> uh, because I, uh, had an I had an idea that, you know, how Bob Ross used to paint pictures and one of my theological reflections on the Trinity has to do with art, and, which is, you know, again, it's a little bit of a different approach. Uh, but this, this year I'm going to kind of keep it just a little bit more uh, low-key and just kind of focus on the, the mystery of this uh, solemnity we celebrate. God, one God, manifesting himself in three divine persons. You know, it's fascinating when we start with the history of the faith. Um, it is sometimes even a, a little bit of a controversy amongst Christians. Um, in some ways, uh, we see possibly a, a divergence between ourselves and Orthodox Christians over let's say, the, the nature and substance of the Holy Spirit, uh, the filioque, I guess, uh, controversy, which seems to have, uh, has, you know, sadly, has sad to say, but uh, divides some uh, Orthodox Christians from, from, our, uh, from our faith, uh, from our, I should say, our, our communion, if you will, our fellowship, uh, although we, we still recognize uh, them as certainly Christians and uh, validity of the sacraments, but again, sad to say, we have a little bit of a falling out over the, the nature of the Holy Spirit, the, the substance, I guess, of the Holy Spirit. But when we look at the triune God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, you know, I think we, all we need to do is we want to know, if we want to kind of like analyze, well, how can this be? You know, how can you have three, quote unquote, uh, divine persons living in one you know, one thing called called God. Uh, well, we only have to look at ourselves, look at ourselves in a mirror, contemplate and meditate upon our, the mystery of our own our own existence. You know, we do. You know, you and I uh, are much more than just as Yoda would say. This crude matter. <laughs> um, the thing is that uh, we are made up of a, a soul and the spirit, the eternal spirit and soul that animate this body. You know, again, a spirit that truly, you know, with, I mean, you can look at um, a person and again, a person isn't just a body. You know, I think that's where we sometimes uh, really fall short in our world today. We look at ourselves as nothing more than just either um, a body, you know, and we either <laughs> take really good care of our bodies uh, some of us really pamper ourselves, or some of us really uh, don't uh, consider our, our health, um, our long-term health, and we don't take care of ourselves. Uh, but the bottom line is that one day, you know, we are going to stop breathing, and we will turn cold and we will die. And the question is though, and again as a priest I've been at the side of many deathbeds, and, you know, one second, you know, a person is alive, they're, you know, for the most part, uh, you know, not just breathing, but many times they're, you know, slowly losing consciousness. But the bottom line is that there comes a moment, a point in time, when that ceases to be a person. And the reason why it ceases to be a person is simply because the spirit, uh, the divine spirit, if you will, that animates that body is is gone. Where does it go? It is a divine spirit and that animates us, you know, controls all of our bodily functions. You know, how many of you are consciously, you know, regulating your heartbeat right this moment? I know I'm not. And unless you've had a heart attack, you begin to realize uh, <laughs> that uh, that process is probably very, very divine because certainly you don't have any control over it. Certainly you can, you can uh, hamper it. You can uh, do things that are going to cause it to be uh, problems. Too much salt in your diet and so on and so forth. Too much cholesterol and, you know, candidate for a heart attack. 
But uh, the bottom line is that you don't do anything to regulate that. You know, all the other metabolic processes that are occurring right now in your body. You know, you know breaking down proteins, and, you know, breaking into all the, the components for your cells to be nourished and your organs to be nourished and rejuvenated, and replenished, and all those things that happen when you uh, are awake or asleep. Uh, they they happen, you know, just again automatically. Again, a, a life force. Uh, that is, you know, that is part of you, but again, you don't really control it. You don't, you know, store it up in a jar and say, oh, I'm going to save my life force for a rainy day. You know, no. in some ways, maybe if you take good care of yourself, that you do that. And then we have a soul. A soul that is able uh, to recognize good and evil. A soul that is able to, you know, uh, understand you know, uh, it's, it's, it's environment. It's a soul that's able to, that has free will to choose between good and evil. Um, again, a soul that, you know, kind of marks who we are as persons, as people, you know, the imprint of our own character and personality. You know, people that will remember our, our, our smile or, or our funny little gestures that we, you know, as we walk or as we sit or as we talk, as we, as we, as we engage with others, you know, those parts of our persona, you know, I think that comes from our soul. And then finally, and finally we have a body, you know, a physical body. Um, and again, it's not really something we rent, you know, it's something that's really not ours per se. But and again, we are all those things that all three of those things make us uniquely human and make us uniquely alive. And you remove uh, probably any one of those things and you don't have a person anymore. You might have an animated animaton, you know, that can, you know, maybe, maybe be alive, but has no, um, you know, has no real um, uh, character or person, I should say. Again, now I'm not talking about people who are in comas and I'm not talking about people, um, you know, like um, someone who might be underneath an anesthesia, you know, you could sit there and poke them and they don't respond really well again we're not talking about that but we are talking that in the, in theory you, if you removed any one of those th components then you don't have a person a person is made up of all three of those so we're more than just a body you know we're more than just a, a persona we're more than just than a life force all three of these things uh, live together in, in one one unit and that's how we see God God the Father and God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. God reveals himself as these three distinct uh, uh, realities. Uh, he does it in scripture many times. Uh, we see in Jesus' baptism, we see God the Father the speaking, and we are even told the people heard this. You know, not just Jesus, not just maybe somebody who was wishfully thinking or you know, was having a hallucination, but it says that the people of the Jordan actually heard this voice coming from heaven saying, Behold, this is my beloved Son, upon whom my favor rests. Hear Him. Listen to Him. And as another manifestation of God's presence, we see it says the Spirit then descended as a dove uh, from heaven. So in this one, what we call theophany, in uh, theological terms, an appearance of God, a manifestation of God, we see Him manifesting in three different forms. We see God we hear God the Father, we see God the Son clearly, and we see God the Holy Spirit in the form of a dove. So again, this is a great mystery of our faith. Uh, there are some people who uh, either uh, disagree or refute or uh, debate the fact that God is triune. Uh, some people have lots of problems with this understanding. Again, I think it always has to do with people who are trying to be very naturalistic in their understanding of faith. Sometimes faith is, as I've said recently in some of my other uh, videos, is a gift from God. And you can't conjure it up. It's not like some little genie in a lamp and you rub the lamp and poof, you know, you get what you wish for. That's not faith. <laughs> Excuse me. Faith is, again, a gift from God and God does bestow it freely upon those who ask. You know, so if you feel like you don't know about faith and would like to know about faith, ask God and He will give you the gift of the faith. May God bless you today on this Trinity Sunday. I bless you.
in your own Father, the Son, and your Holy Spirit.